and welcome to High Growth with HTDC. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. HTDC is the state tech evangelist. So we support everything, tech, innovation, entrepreneurship, and manufacturing. And there's so many amazing things going on in Hawaii, and this is one of the places that we want to share them with you. So one of the things that I think I heard it on the Sunrise Show with Ryan. Anyway, he talked about ingress, and it was really fascinating. So I brought in some players today, or I don't know what you call yourselves, but they are part of Team Resistance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Ingress, is, we have Paul Lawler and Jordan Silva. Thank you for coming today. Thanks for having <laughs> us. Um, so what is Ingress? Like, just give me the basic description of Ingress. Okay, so <coughs> Google has a subsidiary called Niantic and they originally created an app called Field Trip. <coughs> it wasn't terribly popular, and it didn't have a critical mass of places in its database. So they said, well, let's, let's make it a game. So they created this game called Ingress, where the players actually go around submitting <coughs> portals, suggestions, and these the suggestions for portals are uh, places of worship, p art in public places, interesting architecture, historic buildings, things like that. Ah, that's cool. So initially, was this supposed to be kind of like a tour guide, like a virtual tour guide uh, kind of thing? Field trip was, yeah. So the yeah, idea behind trip. it was that you load up this app on your phone, and as you walk down the street, it says, hey, look over to your left, there's this really cool thing. Ah, that's but cool. that only works if they know where all the really cool things are. <laughs> so now they have a whole army of people walking around looking for cool things to submit because they're part of this game. So they take the information from the game uh -huh. and feed their other application. And now when you walk around the city, we know where everything is because we play this game exactly. <laughs> but, uh, People who don't play this game will have a cool app that just says, hey, if you take a left here, you're going to run into a really cool statue, or there's a historic oh, building over neat. here, or a fountain, or go inside that door and there's a piece of art hanging there. That's neat. So how does the game work? Uh, it's kind of like a digital capture the flag, or a, like a, it's a territory control game. Basically, each of these points of interest are portals, and there are two teams in the world, uh, so it's a worldwide game, and the teams fight for control over the portals. And the goal is to have as many That's as you crazy. possibly can own. And, you can link them to uh, together to create fields. So each three that you link together will create a kind of a, it's a mind control field is what the premise is in the game. So the two teams are fighting over the, controlling the minds of all of humanity. <laughs> sure. Sure. I love it. Sure. I don't know if this will show I, up. Can we but, see that? Um, this is basically the, the game live right now. Mm -hmm. And so you can see all of these portals that are physically close to us. And if we tap on one of them... So those are all points of interest? Yeah. You'll see that this is, for example, a plaque, which is down on the original Bishop Estate building. Oh, that's so, cool. So if that portal is gray, then you can capture it for your side. If it's green, uh -huh. then we choose to destroy them because we're the resistance and we're blue. <laughs> <Right>. I <laughs> and see a lot versa. of blue yeah. portals on there. Yeah. Lots of blue. Downtown has lots of blue right now. <laughs> That's so cool. And then, so when you do, when you want to enter a portal, what kind of information do you put in? So like, if you're trying you to submit a portal, depending on who submits it, the people who are actually taking their time to feed the information will go through and uh, they'll write about it. They'll tell you what it is. So I work over at Toba Financial Center, so there's a Walker Park is outside. So when I submitted the fountain over at Walker Park, there's a placard there. I just typed in everything that was on the plaque because it tells you who it's for, why it's there, oh, what cool. year it was created, things like that. So you get really good, useful information from it. Yeah, that is interesting. And so when you submit a portal, does, does it become the resistance? Um, when you or submit it, uh, so what happens is you submit it and you say, hey, this is kind of cool. Um, they have a review process they go through, and oh, eventually it either gets approved or denied um, based on their criteria. So it has to be something of interest. It can't be on school grounds because they don't want a bunch of mm, people wandering around school. elementary schools in the middle of that the night. Um, it has to be somewhere the public generally can access so it can't be like in someone's house. Um, <laughs> that would be horrible. And things like that. And then it'll, you'll get an email one day that just says, hey, we accepted this, and it's now live. And it's great oh, when it goes live. I see, I see. So, so it's up for grabs. Yeah, it just goes up for grabs. But you have your name associated with the picture that you submitted, and uh, a lot of cool. people actually take pride in taking better pictures of them, so you'll see people going around just taking <laughs> nicer pictures because then they get credit for the pictures and stuff like that. And they give you points in the game for submitting things. So they, they really try hard to drive submissions because that's how they're making their money is getting people to places. So that's what kind of the whole purpose of the game is, is to get that kind of information so they make it an incentive to do it. 
How do how so who's making money? How does that work? Um, so there's a couple ways. There's a couple of corporate sponsors. So Verizon is one of the sponsors of the game, depending uh -huh. on where you are. Every Jamba Juice in the United States is a portal, so they're paying somebody for that. Uh, things like that. Uh, in different countries, different uh, franchises are the portals automatically, so they're pulling money right. to, to get there. And I have to assume they're also tracking how we get from point A to point B, because if anyone knows how to find a quick, direct path to a new location, Google's probably interested for the mapping software. So I have to assume wow. that information is useful to them. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> so I, I suspect in the future we'll see. It just barely came out of beta. Yeah. Wow. So I suspect in the future we'll probably see more ways for them to try and monetize mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. whether it's advertising supported or some other method. But it sounds like fun. How do you how do you capture a portal? Oh, so I, there's basically two components here. One is the uh, what they call the resonators. So you put the resonators onto a portal uh -huh. in order to claim it. And then if the portal belongs to the other team, you have these things called bursters. And the bursters are used to destroy a portal that has the other team's resonators on it. Oh. And so there are different levels of both resonators and bursters. So you start out at level one, and you can only do level one things. And then as you progress, you get stronger and stronger weapons and stronger and stronger resonators. That's so cool. And the whole game is GPS based, so it actually gets people out walking around. It's not a game that yeah, you can just sit at home yeah. and play um, unless you're cheating at it. But uh, <laughs> in general, it, I mean, it gets people out. Uh, I mean, I've never walked around downtown nearly as much as I have because of this game. <laughs> There's nice where you just kind of ah, let me just go get that one portal over That's there, so and cool. you end up a mile yeah. or two away, and you're oh my god, have to come back. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you're walking along going, okay, just one more, just right. one more. <laughs> I'm so close to that one. <laughs> yeah, places like Waikiki are, I mean, just full of them. Every major city has hundreds and thousands of these portals because it, I don't, uh, like, most people aren't going to notice that, I mean, how much art is downtown. There's, there's murals everywhere. There's statues everywhere. There's placards everywhere explaining huh. stuff. I mean, just in the normal Honolulu proper downtown area, there's, I mean, easily 200 portals. Wow. And every one of them is something. It's a historic building. It's a piece of art. It's just something of notoriety that you should probably go check out. And I had no idea most of it existed until I started following <laughs> this game. I was like, what's that over there? And now it's really cool because I travel a lot. So when I travel, I mean, oh. you just open this app and it's like, hey, what is that? And you kind of find yourself wandering around a new city and you have something kind of to guide you and you're playing oh, a game. That is cool. There's big communities behind it. So you immediately have a connection to the area. You can talk to your teammates there, and there's big global communities of people working together in this game. So anywhere in the country I go, I can kind of send a message ahead of time saying, hey, I'm coming to your area. Is there anyone there who can meet up with me or do anything like that? So it's really interesting. That is interesting. So there's a pretty big social aspect to this, Huge. Too. It's, the game itself wasn't designed with enough depth to keep people playing. It's the social aspect that keeps it going. Huh. It's the working with people from around the world. I mean, on a daily basis, we talk to people from Japan, from Australia, from everywhere else, because everybody's trying to play together and coordinate. <laughs> so it forces you to just kind of meet new people. That's cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, we have a short video that, uh, that got captured of, I guess, an event? Oh, probably, yeah. Oh. Okay, we don't have the video. <laughs> oh, no, we don't? We don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it looked like you were working with people in, like you said, Japan. And yeah, the event was, uh, so Niantic decided to put on an event as part of their storyline. I don't follow the storyline too closely. Uh, it doesn't interest me all that much as much as playing does. But the idea was that both teams on occasion get together and work together to do stuff. So oh. this was in celebration of some event they wanted to talk about in the storyline. What we did was we coordinated an event with both teams here as well as teams in California and Japan, and we created links from California to Hawaii down at Turtle Bay uh, because it's a point that is just kind of off on the coast and it's notable for Hawaii, mm -hmm. and then into Japan as well. And uh, it was just kind of a show of unity between the teams because there were parallel links instead of fighting each other and things like that. <laughs> so it was a good time. We, uh, we got to work with a lot of people from Japan, from California. Uh, Niantic directly was working with us to help us make wow. sure everything got, got done. So it was a good time. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. And so how do people, like, do you just play on your own, or do you get together in groups and play? Uh, really both. Uh, you can, yeah? it, the game is structured in such a way that you can play entirely on your own. You can play together with people. Now, certain game mechanics are designed to make you play together. For example, mm -hmm. uh, if you're a level 8 or higher player, you can only place one level 8 resonator. So to create a level 8 portal, you need 8 people. Wow. Yeah, so oh. they really try to drive the team aspect. Uh, 
the way the game is structured, yeah, it, they, they want people to play together. And I think we're pretty good at it. I mean, uh, as a whole, the community as a whole, like I said, is really strong. So, um, I don't know, a lot of my closest friends right now are people I've met playing. So it's, I mean, yeah. we go and we hang out and it's, I mean, it's not just playing. It's we hang out at a bar. We meet up every week or so and just kind of barbecue. And I mean, we do barbecues and events for families and everybody brings their kids and we just hang out at the park or well, it's something like that. So yeah. it's just a good time for everybody. Yeah. In fact, the, the other team, the Enlightened, yeah. Uh, have actually done quite a bit in terms of charity work. Exactly. They they get their team oh, together and they participate in charity walks or AIDS walks, things like that, yeah. together as a team. So it's, it builds a lot of that kind of camaraderie too. Yeah, wow. Globally we did the uh, Red Faction Drive, which was uh, getting everybody out to go donate blood. Uh, that was a few months ago, so there's a blue and a green faction. But it, there's always been an ongoing red joke faction. that a Red Faction is going to get created. <laughs> so we did Red Faction Weekend and everybody went and donated blood. I mean, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, you're getting all these people who are talking to each other already and are hanging out anyway at parks. I mean, mm -hmm. you can go do something good with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. And so how do, you, how do people decide which team they want to be on? Usually it's a friend. <laughs> yeah. I, it, there, there is a, an entire backstory to this. Yeah. Jordan kind of alluded to it. But there's this story of how the, there's this alien presence unseen known as the Shapers. Mm -hmm. And the Enlightened team wants to bring this alien technology to Earth because they think it will help evolve humanity mm -hmm. to the next level. Mm -hmm. And the resistance wants to keep humans human. So our objective is to control this alien technology and stop it from proliferating. Yeah. Interesting. That, and that's the story that Niantic came up with. Yeah, and they change it from time to time, and it, it evolves over time. The game's been out for about a year and a half now. Um, originally, it was by invite only. And then it went to invites, and if you bought certain cell phones, you had an invite automatically. And then they just <laughs> went into open release uh, maybe six months ago. And then a couple months ago, it finally came available on iPhone. So mm -hmm. they've been rolling it out over the last year and a half or so. But uh, in general, people pick a team either completely at random or because they know someone who plays and mm -hmm. they choose to play with their friend. Or mm -hmm. like me, a couple of my close friends introduced me to the game. I immediately picked the opposite team <laughs> because I like, I'm, I'm a competitive <laughs> person. So. Uh, I joined the opposite team, and my roommates are actually both on the other team currently. So oh it's a good time. That's it's funny. interesting at times. So I don't know if you can pick this up, but uh, you can see here wow. a map of the, oh, yeah. the world. And with the exception of sub-Saharan Africa, where there's not a lot of cell phone service, you can see that there are essentially portals pretty much everywhere in the world. That's amazing. And do you know how many people are actually playing? Niantic doesn't release that number my guess would be in the millions. Yeah, it has to be at this point. I mean, locally in Hawaii, there's probably maybe one or two hundred just very active people on this island, and then another thousand probably that are huh. just kind of idle or casual players. Mm -hmm. But at any given time, there's a, there's a, com a communication log that shows up that shows what everybody's kind of doing. You can see when people capture portals, when a portal gets destroyed, when fields get destroyed or built. So you can kind of see who's playing, and it's pretty rare to not see something happening. I mean. Huh. We'll be playing at two or three or four in the morning on a weekend, and you'll see people Other out people all playing? the time. Oh I mean, I've been gosh. out at the store, and you see somebody on their phone, and you, you get used <laughs> to the sound of the game, so you kind of hear a little chime, and you're like, oh, that guy's playing Ingress. <laughs> you see somebody just walking by, and you notice the screen. and So I've just run into complete strangers, but I know they're playing, and I can kind of see who they are in the game, and you just meet people randomly walking around playing this game. That's interesting. There's also an in-game mechanism called Calm, yeah. where you can talk to people, who are oh. other people who are playing, yeah, on, so both on the other side and on your side. Wow, through whatever you're playing yeah, on? Through the yeah, through the game, yeah. So there's like a little chat room built into the game itself. Mm. To, and so it helps uh, with communication and kind of getting in touch with people. And Interesting. Yeah, we meet new people pretty often. And then you build big Google Plus communities around it. So it's mm -hmm. Google, so everybody uses Google Plus because that's just what it is. <laughs> Which, by the way, has been a huge boost for Google Plus. Yes. <laughs> it sounds like it. That's yeah. amazing. And how do people find, like, how do people join? Um, right now, you can just go to the App Store and look up Ingress and download it. It's open now, so anybody with any smartphone except for a Windows uh, device, so if you have an iPhone or an Android phone, you can just go to the App Store, download mm -hmm. Ingress. Uh, when it asks, you pick the resistance. And if you're in Hawaii, uh, <laughs> look us up. Just say, hey, we saw you on uh, yeah, the you show. You guys have a site, right, I think? Uh, uh, yeah, we do. A website? Um, yes. and I don't know what it is, though. It's <laughs> hawaiiresistance.com, I think. I think so, yeah. Or you can Google it. But yeah, you can definitely Hawaii Google resistance. manage that. <laughs> and I believe enlightenedhawaii.com is the other site. Uh, it's ENLHI. Oh, ENLHI, yeah. okay. <laughs> that is so interesting. And kids play? Can kids play? Um, yeah, we have a couple of families who play pretty regularly. You'll see the mom and the dad started, and then uh, 
uh, usually they're around 10 or 11 or so when they're getting their first tablets or cell phones nowadays and they're out with their parents playing and That's um, cool. a lot of people didn't like it initially but I think it's pretty well accepted now Google's kind of accepted that younger kids are gonna play teenagers mm -hmm. are gonna be playing so uh, I, I think everybody respects that and recognizes that now so there's not a lot of I don't know, outward aggression towards kids playing, so people That's try to be good. cautious of That's it, and good. we try to keep it pretty family friendly. I mean, we barbecue, we invite people out, yeah. we, we know that there's going to be kids around, so yeah. you don't see a lot of cursing generally family in the comp thing. Yeah. Obviously, you don't want kids crawling through Chinatown at three in the morning, but... <laughs> yeah. That's true. And is there like a virtual reality kind of aspect to it? Like, does it inter well, interface? Well, it's, it's uh, considered augmented reality, right? So it's it's the world around you, augmented but it, they alter it with, uh, with their own twist. So I'm walking down the street, I obviously can't see the portals, but when you pop up this game, all of a sudden you start seeing things and... Like it, you use the camera? Oh, uh, no, can... not with the camera, just with the, the map just, itself. Oh, I see, I see. Because the, the map overlays, the, the ingress map overlays on the real world. Yeah, mm. it's using Google Maps as the, the driver underneath it, so it's a That's Google amazing. map with things on it. But when you play enough, you start recognizing things as portals rather than... I mean, that's how we give directions, generally. When I'm talking to people I play with, it's, yeah, go take a left at this portal or go here, this is where we'll meet you. And that's those funny. are what you use as directions. And I mean, it got to one point, and I always joke about it because I caught myself once, um, duplicates happen sometimes. People will submit the same thing as a portal, and the Kamehameha statue down on King Street was a good example where there was actually three of them at one point. Wow. So one day I was talking about it, I was like, yeah, it's down by the cam statues. And my friend's like, statues? <laughs> it's like, but for me, it's because I'm always yeah. there because of the game, there's three of them. But in reality, there's just <laughs> one. So it's, you play enough and it really starts tying into how you recognize everything around you. That sounds like fun. And additionally, talk about scary stories. I've actually found myself driving down and looking at the portal itself to see if it was blue or green, like it would actually be blue or green in real life. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Very interesting. Ingress, check it out. It's yeah. in all the app stores, I guess. My guests today have been Paul Lawler and Jordan Silva. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. That sounds very intriguing. Mm -hmm. And this has been High Growth with HTDC, and I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. Thank you so much for joining us and supporting the entrepreneur and tech community, and we'll see you next time.